What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are continuing the positional previews for the New York Giants. And today we're going to be looking at the D-line. I made a D-line video yesterday, but with the signing of Devin Taylor, I decided not to go through with uploading it because it wouldn't be current and you guys would be looking at something older. Uh, so just as I was about to upload the video, Devin Taylor was signed a defensive end from the Detroit Lions and um, just wound up not make, just not going through with the video and decided to redo the video. So this, this is probably going to be a double upload kind of day. Maybe even triple upload. We'll see what happens because uh, I want to get the positional previews over with so you guys could uh, go through all that. Then we're going to start covering the OTAs. So we're going to start off with the defensive line. Um, and in, we'll start off with the defensive ends first. So we've got Olivier Vernon, Jason Pierre-Paul, Oba Odigizua, who I assume he, you know, he retired from the NFL, as you guys know. He's probably not going to play this year. He's still on the roster for some reason, but... I don't know. I've seen an Instagram post of him working out within the Giants facility, but I don't know if that's an old picture that he decided to upload or if that's a recent picture. Um, I don't really know. I don't think he's going to be working out with us. And I don't think I saw him in any OTA, like defensive line highlights or stuff like that. I don't think I saw him there. Correct me if, if I'm wrong, guys. You guys probably know better than I do at this point um, as far as double O uh, goes. So uh, then we got o, uh, Romeo Aquara, Kerry Wynn. Stanley Mapunga, Evan Schwan, Avery Moss, our fifth round draft pick, Ishak Williams, Jordan Williams, and then Devin Taylor, defensive end formerly of the Detroit Lions. And the Giants decided to pick him up. Great signing. Uh, like Rayvon from Virginia said, this gives Steve Spagnolo a a better better personnel to work with when going in that NASCAR formation that he loves so much and that's very effective. So um, this would give a better opportunity to go in those NASCAR formations with Devin Taylor and give um, give Olivier Vernon and JPP a break because they played so many snaps last year, talking about like 85%, something like that. When I was, I remember right before JPP got injured, they said something like 85% or something like that. It was the majority of the snaps, they were playing ton, a lot of snaps. And um, this gives the D-line, you know, this adds to the D-line. And it's going to uh, give a lot of opportunities to Devin Taylor and Romeo Aguara now that they can come in and fill in for JPP and Olivia Vernon when they get uh, tired and stuff like that. So, anyway... So, we're going to start off with Olivier Vernon and JPP. They're coming in as the starters once again. Hopefully, both of them, and maybe at least one of them, get over 10 sacks. I'm hoping that um, last year, according to Pro, Pro Football Focus, I don't, I don't always trust Pro Football Focus because they say some bogus stuff because uh, they rely strictly on numbers and stuff like that. But according to Pro Football Focus, take this with a grain of salt, they were graded, Olivia Vernon and JPP as a tandem were graded as the best defensive end tandem in the NFL during the time they were playing. As you guys know, JPP got injured towards the end of the season, wasn't able to play that playoff game against Green Bay. But when they were playing together, they were they were rated as the best tandem in the NFL as the you know uh, defensive end tandem. So that I hope that holds some weight and hopefully they come back better than ever. Hopefully they get over 10 sacks because you know, Lord knows they're getting paid a lot of money. So, talking about like record-breaking numbers. So, uh, Olivier Vernon and JPP really need to come back strong next year. And hopefully with the rest that they're getting, that they'll be putting more uh, effort in, in their snaps. Moving on to Owo Digizua, like I said, he's on the roster, but I don't think it's fair to include him because I think he, he's retired from the NFL, temporarily retired. I don't know if he's going to stay that way, but... Who knows? Then we got Kerry Wynn coming back. He's on the roster bubble. He he's on the roster bubble more than ever at this point. I already thought he was he was a, a candidate to get cut because we have a good D line group. Then we add in Devin Taylor. I mean, he's gonna make the fifty three man roster. You know, except for from injury, I think Devin Taylor is gonna make this roster. So um, we're looking at Kerry Wynn. Just you know, he's gonna have to beat out. He's gonna have to beat out uh, Romeo Aquara for that last spot. Because I don't see the Giants keeping more than five people on, on the defensive end, on the D-line. So um, so we got Romeo Aquara moving on to him. He is, um, 
He's going to come in, hopefully, and be our third defensive end. He really proved it last year, played great last year when JPP got injured uh, during that Dallas game. Romeo Aquara made his name known on Sunday night football. He went off, and I believe he had one or two sacks. I believe he had one sack, a couple tackles for loss, a couple key tackles, too, even in open space, and even tackles down the field. This guy was everywhere. I... And, and I also think he had a pass defense, too. I also think he batted down a pass, too. So, you know, we're, when his name is called, he's de he definitely performs. So, moving on, Stanley Mapunga. He was on the practice squad last year. Former fifth-round pick of the Atlanta Falcons. Don't think he's going to make the roster. Um, he's, already had, he's already been two years in here, and he still hasn't been able to crack the roster. So, Moving on, Evan Schwan, undrafted free agent from Penn State. I like Evan Schwan, but like I said, this D-line group is so stacked right now, we might not have room for him. But look for him to potentially make the practice squad. Eshaq Williams, a lot of people are hoping that he makes the roster because he had some great talent. It's just that he was out of football for quite a while. And now that uh, you know he's getting adjusted back into playing football more often, that... People are saying that may, he may make the roster. I doubt that. Like I said, with his D-line group, it's, it's going to be hard to crack the roster. Uh, moving on, Avery Moss, fifth-round pick. Like I said, rookie. You know, Jerry Reese calls him a true defensive end. I, it's not what I see in him. I see him as a true 3-4 outside linebacker, and I think that's what he'll strive at. But we'll see. I don't think he's a true defensive end, but like I said, they see something in him, so we have no choice but to stay optimistic and hope that he's right at this point. Like I said, I don't, I don't think he's gonna, you know, be much, but let's just hope he's some good depth for us. Uh, that when his name is called, that he performs. Uh, a uh, Ishak Williams, like I said, I don't think he's gonna make the roster. Jordan Williams, he's been on the Jets, he's been on the Miami Dolphins, couldn't crack their rosters. Uh, been on the pra I believe he, he was on the roster on the Miami Dolphins roster, but couldn't get it on the, on the uh, Jets roster, which is not saying much because the Jets roster on the D-line is also stacked. So I still don't think he's not going to make this roster. So um, then we got Devin Taylor, uh, our new pickup. He, had, he has 11 and a half sacks these past two years combined, I believe. Last year, he only had like four and a half sacks or something like that. He didn't play well. He didn't play, you know, I mean, think about it. He was the, their best pass rusher. I mean, I don't think he was ready for that number one kind of role. But if you bring him in, in this case, uh, in a backup role, I think he's going to do just fine. Just like what you guys were saying, Cody Sensiball, when I was talking about Cody Sensiball last year, when we signed him, a lot of Titans fans were commenting, saying that he sucks and everything. But he sucked as a starter. But when you put Cody Sensiball in the dime, where he's, he, he's facing the fourth best receiver, he performed pretty well for us last year. There was nothing bad I could say about Cody Sensiball. He was a better corner than Trevin Wade Evan ever was. So, like I said, you put Devin Taylor in a backup role. He's probably going to be the fourth defensive end, fourth or third defensive end on his roster. Uh, depends if he beats out Romeo Aquara for that spot. But it's looking good right now for Devin Taylor. He's probably going to get a lot of snaps uh, coming up uh, in this season. And now we're moving on to the defensive tackles. We got Damon Harrison, number 98. Big Damon Harrison next to Big Dalvin Tomlinson. I'm excited to see these guys. I'm excited to see how well they could stop the run. I'm excited to see. Damon Harrison has some where it was able to get to the quarterback last year. Hopefully he does, that, he does the same thing this year. And Dalvin Tomlinson as well. He, he's not known for getting to the quarterback, but hopefully he does that. Moving on, Jay Bromley's coming in as a third defensive tackle. I don't see much out of Jay Bromley. I hope somehow he does something because I really don't know what his specialty is. He can't get to the uh, can't get to the passer. He only has one sack in his career, and that was because JPP. I believe it was the Browns game, and that's because JPP like knocked Josh McCown. Uh, he hit him or something. I don't know what it was. I know JPP had something to do with Jay Bromley's sack, and yeah, so it's pretty much JPP sack. I don't know if it was against the Browns. You guys have to. Uh, correct me on that one. Uh, Robert Thomas, he may beat out Jay Bromley for that third defensive tackle spot. Who knows? But um, it's some good competition there. Defensive tackle is also a very good spot, um, you know, as far as depth goes, along with the defensive end. This D-line is maybe the best in the NFC, maybe the best in the AFC. This D-line is fantastic. Um, in my opinion, and this is unbiased opinion, I think we have the best D-line in the NFL. That's just how it is. I mean, we don't have the best pass rushers. I get that. But as a whole, talking about starters and the depth, we, we've got it all. So 
Moving on, we got two exciting undrafted free agents at the defensive tackle position, one out of Wake Forest and one out of Notre Dame. Uh, the one out of Notre Dame is Jaron Jones. A lot of people said he should have been drafted. He was not. The Giants were able to pick him up. He's a huge defensive tackle. This guy, like, this guy overshadows offensive linemen. I mean, this guy is huge. Um, he's another run-stuffing defensive tackle. We have a lot of those, so will he make the roster? I don't know because we just have so much of those. Uh, we have, like, three of them that I can mention. Uh, Robert Thomas, Dalvin Thompson, and Damon Harrison. They're, you know, run-stopping defensive tackles, old school. Then we've got the new school defensive tackle, Josh Banks. Uh, the reason why I say new school is because lately these defensive tackles have been getting slimmer, they've been getting faster, and they can still stop the run. Josh Banks is that guy. Um, he's a, a slim, fast, aggressive defensive tackle, something that we need to throw on in third down and long situation, pass rushing situations. And I think he has a better shot to make the roster than Jaron Jones, in my opinion. I know you guys are very excited for Jaron Jones. So am I. I would like to see that competition in the preseason. But I think Josh Banks has the edge there as far as um, what we need because we have so many run-stuffing uh, defensive tackles. I think it's it's it'll be a change of pace to get a Josh Banks and throw him out there on third and long and stuff like that and passing down situations where we need to pass the rusher. I'm going to pass the rusher. <laughs> rush the passer um so going on to the unofficial depth chart i've got the giants keeping five defensive ends and the and four defensive tackles olivier vernon jason pierre paul romeo aquara avery moss and, da and uh, devin taylor if i had to put them in order olivier vernon jason pierre paul on the left and right and then for that third spot devin taylor then romeo aquara then Avery Moss, so uh, tough luck for Evan Schwan and Stanley Mapunga and Kerry Wynn. Kerry Wynn will be cut, I believe, so um, he'll find another team somewhere. He's definitely a good depth def defensive end. But moving on to defensive tackle, I've got Damon Harrison, obviously, Dalvin Tomlinson, obviously. I've got um, Jay Bromley. I just take this with a grain of salt because I don't. I just don't think the Giants are going to cut their third round pick. So former former third round pick. I just don't think they're going to do it. So they'll keep up Jay Bromley and then add Josh Banks. So uh, I have Robert Thomas and Jaron Jones not making the roster. But that's all I got for you guys today. See you guys in the next video.